Next, let us consider a few examples to see whether an expenditure is capital, revenue or deferred. Overhauling on purchase of second-hand machinery. Now, remember when we buy any asset, all the costs incurred up to its installation till it starts working, functioning, all those costs are supposed to be capitalized. They are capital expenditure. They are added to the cost of the asset. Okay. Now here what do we have? We have bought a second hand machinery obviously and then overhauled it. Therefore all such costs would be treated as a capital expenditure. Capital expenditure. Freight which is paid on purchase of plant and machinery. Like I said again, all costs incurred till the machinery is put to use. So the asset has only been purchased. All costs, the freight costs, the installation costs, loading, unloading, fixing, everything, all these costs till the machine gets functional would be added to the cost of the asset. So this is also a capital expenditure. Expenditure added, added to the cost of the asset. Legal expenses paid to acquire a property, again the same logic for acquiring the property. Annual whitewash of the factory, annual, this is periodic, this is recurring, every year this happens, sorry, this is here, recurring and this would therefore be a revenue expenditure. Annual whitewashing, annual paint, painting. These charges are supposed to be incurred in order to maintain the asset in the working condition. <clears throat> Therefore, they are revenue expenditures. Expenses incurred to reduce the working capital requirement. This would be a capital expenditure. It's an expenditure which is giving us a, a benefit of a long term nature. The working capital requirement would be reduced. <clears throat> Loss which is caused by theft of cash by cashier after business hours. This is a revenue expenditure. There is no asset generated as such. It is a loss which has been suffered due to theft. In the ordinary course of business, a theft which has occurred and therefore we write it off to profit and loss treated as a revenue expense. Share premium. So what is a share premium? When a company issues shares, a 100 rupee share may be issued for 150 rupees. So the capital of one share, the capital, the amount which will be capitalized or treated as capital is only 100. However, for a 100 rupee share, we are getting 150. The 50 rupees extra is said to be a, is said to be premium, is said to be premium. So share premium is actually a, a capital receipt. This is not really expenditure. It is a capital receipt. We'll of course discuss capital receipt again. Amount spent on increasing the seating capacity in a cinema hall. If the seating capacity has increased, its revenue increasing, its revenue generating capacity has increased. Therefore, the amount which is spent on increasing the seating capacity should be a capital expenditure, should be capitalized. Traveling expenses of a director to a foreign for a foreign trip to purchase an asset. Since it is expenses for purchase of an expense, it would be a cap for a purchase of an asset, this should be a capital expenditure. Recovery of bad debt. Bad debts recovered. Mind you, this is again a receipt, not really an expenditure. But bad debts, money which bad debts were written off as an expense. Now we have recovered this amount. This is normally treated as a as a revenue, as an income. It's not a liability. We, the business does not have a liability to anybody else. As I said before, receipts we will discuss again. But recovery of a bad debt should be a revenue receipt. We just treat it as an income. We take it to the credit side of the profit and loss account. Amount spent on an unsuccessful patent. We've been trying maybe to get 
patent rights. We have developed some technology. We wanted a patent right, but it is possible. But maybe we were not able to get this particular patent. So the amount which has been spent on this, whatever money has been spent, there is no enduring benefit for it from this therefore it is not an asset and we simply write it off as an expense so the amount paid on an unsuccessful patent would be a revenue expenditure preliminary expenses preliminary expenses are the expenses in setting up the company huge amount involved since the company is intended to last for a long time, the preliminary expenses were charged over a few years, first few years of the life of the company. This was actually a deferred revenue expenditure. Having said that, as per AS 26, now everything is supposed to be written off to the profit and loss account. <clears throat> so is the case with bro uh, brokerage on issue of shares. It could be a deferred revenue expenditure. A company raises capital by issuing shares. In order to do that, it also incurs certain brokerage expenses. These expenses, since the issue of sharing, generating of capital, taking of capital by the company, the benefit of that is expected over a period of time. The, the brokerage paid for such issue of shares was also written off over a period of time. Basically, it's a revenue expense, but since the benefit is expected over a greater period, it was treated as a deferred revenue expenditure. So also the same thing with deferred, with heavy advertisement expenditure, benefit of the expenditure because it's a very heavy amount, not the regular amounts of uh, advertising since a huge amount and we expect this benefit in future, the whole thing, we could spread this cost over say three years or five years as the company things fit. Therefore, it is called a deferred revenue expenditure. I repeat, as per AS 26, these expenses are to be written off now to the profit and loss account. <clears throat> the cost of rings and pistons of an engine change to increase its fuel efficiency. If efficiency has been improved, it should be treated as a capital expenditure. 50,000 expenditure incurred for trial run of newly installed machinery also would be a capital expenditure. Once it begins a running, all expenditure on its normal functioning, normal running would be considered revenue. But initially, the first cost up to the point that it is made functional, including this trial run, could be capitalized. A quick a neater presentation of what we discussed before. Quick recap once more. Overhauling on purchase of machinery. Once you overhaul, it's, it's after all a purchase. First cost before it even starts functioning. It's a capital expenditure. Freight paid on purchase. Same thing. Capital. Legal expenses to acquire property. Also capital. Annual maintenance, as I said, is a maintenance cost. And therefore, it's revenue. Expenses incurred to reduce working capital requirement is capital. Loss caused by theft is revenue, share premium capital, but this is an income, mind you, it's a receipt. I'll call it a receipt, not an income. Capital. Amount spent on increasing the seating capacity improves the revenue earning capacity, therefore, traveling expenses, this is again expenses in connection with purchase of an asset, therefore, capital. Recovery of bad debt, this is a receipt, revenue receipt and therefore this I could call an income, it's a revenue receipt. Amount spent on an unsuccessful patent, I don't have a patent, I don't have a right, I don't have a patent, money was spent but I was not able to procure the patent, therefore this is entirely expensed out, it is revenue. Preliminary expenses, brokerage on issue of shares, Heavy advertisement expenditure, these are expenses which are normally of a 
revenue in nature, but they are of huge amounts. Benefit is expected over the future periods and therefore they are called deferred revenue expenditure. The cost of rings and pistons change to increase fuel efficiency, therefore its capital incurred for trial run of a newly installed machinery, it is also capital.